Hello fellow adventurers, hikers, explorers. If you're here watching this video, then I'm going to assume that you're interested in hiking the Grand Canyon and more specifically interested in doing a rim to river to rim hike like I did. So this past October, I finally did my hike into the Grand Canyon. This was the first time. I've been to the Grand Canyon many times, but really wanted to get down into it. Whenever I travel somewhere, I like to immerse myself in it by running in the morning or going for a walk and really just seeing everything at eye level and being a part of it and having that city or place around me. And uh, that's how I felt about the Grand Canyon. I was intimidated by it. I had a girlfriend who did it last year and uh, I was very excited for her. She did rim to rim, so she did north rim to south rim. Uh, that actually wasn't an option during COVID because they stopped running the shuttle from the south rim to the north rim. Typically what happens is you would uh, park your car, let's say at the south rim, and you would get a shuttle then from the south rim up to the north rim. It's about a four hour drive. Spend the night at the north rim and start your hike early in the morning. And then you hike out the south rim. On October 28th, I stayed at Masswick Lodge I spent two nights there. Uh, the first night was so that I could get an early start in the morning on my hike down into the Grand Canyon. And then the second night was because I didn't want to be rushed out. I didn't want to feel that I had a time limit. Phoenix is about three hours from the Grand Canyon. And I, I didn't want to be forced to get out of there by a certain time so that I could still drive home with some daylight. And it's very dark in the Grand Canyon area and um, you know, getting old, mid fifties. It's kind of hard to drive in the dark. So I did spend a second night. I'm glad I did. Gave my legs a chance to rest before leaving the following morning. And I also got to film the little church that's, that's up there in Grand Canyon Village. So uh, that was nice to be able to do on my way out. I, I love churches. Uh, in preparing for this hike, uh, it's, it's not something that I trained hard for. I am fit. I do exercise nearly every day. And at the time that I had done this hike, I was not going to the gym, so I was walking a walk-around combination at least eight miles every day or hiking in some of the mountains in the area. My training consisted of um, continuing my eight-mile walks and then adding in more elevation gain climbs like Black Mountain, uh, Piastawa Mountain, Pinnacle Peak. And I was going to those, they're good leg, but lung busters, they really um, they build the strength in your legs. And that's something that you wanna have for getting out of the Grand Canyon. I was really concerned about that climb out. I, I went back and forth about the different combinations I could do several times. So typically what people do in hiking from the South Rim down into the Grand Canyon, they would hike down the South Kaibab Trail, which is a seven mile trail and it ha it's a, at an elevation of over 7,000 feet. So typically it's not the trail you wanna hike up because the elevation gain is so much, it's 500 feet more than Bright Angel Trail. So they would hike down South Kaibab Trail, down to Phantom Ranch near the Colorado River, and then turn around and hike back up Bright Angel Trail, which is closer to eight miles. And the, um, the elevation gain for Bright Angel Trail is 4,460 feet, so much different than than what you get with South Kaibab. So you would hike down South Kaibab, very steep, difficult going down, hard on the knees, and uh, take a nice break at Phantom Ranch. They have a canteen there, and then head back up Bright Angel Trail. I got started at 6 a.m. I, I, really, my plan was to start by 5 a.m., but because sunrise didn't happen until 6.30 and it was so dark and it was so cold, I thought maybe it's not such a good idea to start at five. It is dark there. You can barely see in front of your face. You have to have a headlamp. So make sure you have a good headlamp, good battery in it. And when I set off to find the start of the South Kaibab Trail, um, that was something I wished I had seen in the light before I started that morning because it was pitch black and I kept walking around looking for where's the start. And it's a little unnerving. You're walking along the edge of the Grand Canyon in the pitch black. And while you have your headlamp and you really can see the edge, there's just this fear that you're gonna misstep and, and do something wrong. But my, my um, clue that I was near the trailhead is that there was a map sign around there. And I kept looking at the map and thinking, where is the start of this trail? I was looking at my All Trails app and I had it activated to show where I was in relation to where they showed the start of the trail. And I just kind of kept walking around and then I saw this inconspicuous little start to the trail. 
that went down and uh, Avery started off with me. He was going to just do part of the hike with me. And I said, I think this is it. He goes, that's it? I said, yeah, that's, that's it. It's really inconspicuous. We ran into someone else then who went ahead of us and I felt really good about about heading down that path knowing I was on the right one. We got started and it was dark, had the headlamp and it was quiet and it's just really weird being in that type of a quiet. It's almost like when you're in the north and it snows and you, you feel blanketed by uh, surroundings that absorb all noise. All I could hear was just the crunch, crunch, crunch of my feet going down this sandy, more sand than gravel I would say, um, descent down South Kaibab Trail. I had on a knit cap, I had on my mittens, knit mittens, I had my trekking poles, which I didn't really need them at that point, but was feeling more comfortable with them because it was so dark. About 0.9 miles in, I got to the first stop, which is Ua Point. And uh, Ua Point, there are no facilities, there's no water on South Kebab Trail. Uh, Ua Point is just a great place to see the sunrise. It's beautiful. It is spectacular. The most wonderful thing about the South Kaibab Trail is that you are immersed in canyon lands where you'll see on some of the Bright Angel images, Bright Angel videos, that it's a little more woodsy down at the bottom. You feel a little more wooded and river and there are streams, but South Kaibab is just this spectacular canyon land with different colors all over that you have the purple and the rusts and the browns and it's just gorgeous. Your next stop, it's about one and a half miles in from the start of the trail is at Cedar Ridge and I think that my favorite um, part that I, I thought was just beautiful, just stunning, was this section of Cedar Ridge. You're walking, it looks like you're walking on a ridge, like on the ridge of a mountain, although they have it built out to be an actual walking path with sides on it and it has this kind of a sidewalk feel, but it is gorgeous. Cedar Ridge is recommended as a turnaround point for people who are just, you, you kind of want to hike in and you want to hike back out. It's recommended to not go any farther than that. They have restrooms there. I thought the restrooms were really hard to find. There was no sign that said restrooms are here. It looked like it was a mule stop. They have bars that the, the mule drivers can hook the mules up to. And then there's this sort of a, almost like a two-story stable looking thing with three doors at the bottom with locks on it. And I thought, well, maybe that's a place for food for the mules, where maybe they keep hay for them. I had no idea, but something told me I should go up the side, up a hill, to reach the second level of this stable looking thing and just check to see if those are bathrooms. And sure enough, they were. They had three bathrooms up there and uh, just so you know that that's available. This is another beautiful point to get some photos of the ever-changing canyon walls as the sun is rising. Three miles in is Skeleton Point. You're now down to about 5,200 feet elevation. So you've gone down a couple thousand, almost a couple thousand feet. And um, this is where you get the first view of the Colorado River. You can hear it. It's weird, it's still so far away, but you can just hear the rushing. You can't feel the power of, of the noise and, and the view, but you get your glimpse of it. It's beautiful. After Skeleton Point, there are some super steep switchbacks. There's also an area there that was so narrow, I, I felt a little, mm, little queasy from it, and uh, just really wanted to have my bearings, almost kind of wanted to keep my hands on the side wall as I was walking by, but I didn't. I was a good photographer and took my camera out and didn't know, do I watch where my feet are going or look at the scenery? So I did a little bit of both, and it, it's just beautiful. Tanto East. And if you can't see that, it says South Kaibab Trail tip off emergency phone, which is up there. End of, well, I don't know about the end of the South Kaibab Trail, but signifies the end. So down below there's a tunnel I'll go into and then cross that bridge and head to the left. As I arrive at the tunnel, I get a little apprehensive. First, I'm taking in this view, this beautiful view of the bridge over the Colorado River. And then I look to the left and I see a team of mules coming. So I actually start kind of a light jog here thinking, 
I have to get across this bridge before these mules come because I didn't know what to do if we ended up crossing on the bridge. So um, when I did come around, the mule team was coming. The lead just told me to stand off to the side. But you can see there's a lot of dust kicked up as they walk through the sand. I'm breathing in an awful lot of dust. But what a beautiful scene. Then I reached the Bright Angel campground, and I just stopped to take a look at the map to orient myself to kind of figure out where I was, where there's water, where there are restrooms, which way is Phantom Ranch and just took in the scenery of Bright Angel Creek. It's beautiful. Start on the knees and uh, take a nice break at Phantom Ranch. They have a canteen there. Um, for me, that was a great spot to get a cup of coffee, eat some of my food, change my socks, take a rest, recharge the batteries. My batteries, my camera batteries, my watch battery, my phone battery, I had all kinds of batteries that needed to be charged and then head back up Bright Angel Trail. I crossed over Bright Angel Creek, back through the Bright Angel Campground, and decided to fill up my water bottle with some water from the spigot there. Crossed the bridge over the Colorado River, but this time on the Bright Angel Trail side. And it's a lot of sand to hike through. I still had my sandals on because I, I just felt good with the change of shoes. I had a lot of sand in my sandals. They're keen sandals. They're more like hiking sandals. And you can see I came upon another uh, group of mules coming down. No problem. I just stood over to the side. trail crosses a creek here. It's quite pretty, this canyon. This goes down into the Colorado. I was glad I had the Keen sandals on. It was great to have a change of shoes once I got to the bottom, but they also came in handy when I was crossing the creeks that were down in this area of Bright Angel Trail be more of a Grand Canyon view other than just canyon and wooded and I just came from those switchbacks down there and let's see that way and somehow came over here and up there and over here so yeah, my finger didn't do such a good job there but Anyway, good time to take a break, take in the view, since most of the time I just have to look down. In this section, I came across some mud that had me climbing on the wall. There was no way I was going to get mud all over my shoes. Some mud to walk through. It's still a beautiful day. 1.01 p.m. This is a bit of a harrowing point down the trail. That drop off on the side is steep. It's not too far down, but far enough. And then we come upon Indian Gardens, which is a campground, a place where you can fill your water, hit the restroom. If you have a tent, you can stop and rest. Just enjoy your time there. Great sense of community. Indian Gardens, four and a half miles to go. The hardest ones. They have a campground here, water, toilet. A helicopter had just come in. I don't know if it was dropping somebody off or picking them up. Very pretty. Quiet, look at this big old tree. Wow, it's crazy. I started using my trekking poles at this point. My knees and hips were just really starting to bother me. This constant climb up was becoming a bit of a problem. I think part of it was I thought I had electrolytes with me, and I didn't. I had energy powder, so I wasn't getting electrolytes to replenish in my body. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know how much I love seeing wildlife out on the trails. And this is a case where, uh, one of the best cases, I think, to see some of these mountain goats. I think they're mountain goats. I'm not sure technically what they are. There were three of them. And two came down the path, braved past a lot of the hikers, and they're waiting for their buddy, the third guy, who's just not coming. And at this point, he jumps off the trail and onto the side of the canyon. So as I look back with the camera, you'll see him just off the trail and in kind of like that grassy area to the right. That's a steep drop. 4 p.m. I'm on Bright Angel Trail. 
I've gone 19 miles so far, but we did start from where we parked the car instead of taking the shuttle to the trailhead. My pace is slow. I feel like I'm going a mile an hour. That was the last recording I did. My phone ran out of space to record video and my uh, GoPro ran out of space on the SD card. So I just did the last, uh, took the last grueling steps up Bright Angel Trail, 19.74 miles, rim to river to rim in 10 hours and 13 minutes. So thanks for watching. I hope that you found this video interesting, helpful on your hike. Again, it's not recommended to do a down and up in one day, so I'm not saying to do that. I'm just telling you what my experience was. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please hit the subscribe button. I'll have more adventures coming up soon, doing things that keep me connected to God. Night, I want to drive with you. Looking for a bar in the nearest town. I've never seen a sky so bright.